Hello and welcome to GMO Media Presents Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. In this captivating episode, we will set forth on a voyage into the domain of a pharmaceutical powerhouse, boasting a legacy spanning over 38 years. This visionary institution is at the helm of one of India's most expansive API pipelines with an annual tablet production of 1 billion units and remarkable turnover surpassing 1500 crore rupees. The revered name that embodies the spirit of the joy of growing together is none other than Morphan Laboratory. Join us as we embark on a journey of discovery through this extraordinary organization which stands as a true architect of transformation in the healthcare industry. Founded in 1984, Morpan Laboratories has risen as a shining example of achievement in the pharmaceutical sector with its most remarkable accomplishments rooted in the realm of API production. These formulations encompass prescription drugs, over-the-counter remedies and active pharmaceutical ingredients APIs, and the company's API production facilities stand as shining examples of global excellence adhering to the highest international standards. In the relentless pursuit of global healthcare excellence, Morpan has cast its influence far and wide, transcending continental boundaries to bring its unwavering commitment to enriching lives to every corner of the globe. This expansion beyond geographic confines is paralleled by their towering achievements in API production, where they proudly claim the world's pre-eminent production capacities for loratadine, montelukas, desloratadine and atorvastatin. Incontestably, this positions them as unrivaled global leaders in this field. Morpin is, without a doubt, a shining beacon of accomplishment in the world of pharmaceutical APIs, setting new standards of excellence for the entire industry. Guiding this pioneering institution is Mrs. Sushil Tsuri, who holds the distinguished role of Chairman and Managing Director at Morpin Laboratories. With a compassionate perspective, Mr. Suri is driven by a vision of accessible and affordable healthcare solutions that enhance lives on a global scale. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Suri, and welcome to the show. Marpan Laboratories has scripted a narrative of extraordinary progression. So, could you give us um, a few nuggets about the initial days and how it started in the beginning? Anisha, I would say that we started as humble as everybody does, every every big thing, every big picture has a small history. It was started by my elder brother, KB Suri, who is no more with us now. So just at the age of 2021, 20, he started thinking about it. And uh, just after graduation, he just worked for three years in one of the Pfizer's in Chagari and with six people and rented premises, 40,000 rupees capital. That's how it started. So from 40,000 rupees capital, today we are almost a 2,000 road company. From six people, we are 3,000 people supplying and selling to, I would say, 80 countries. So started with one product, now we've got 800 products. I think this has been a phenomenal journey. And I don't mind saying that it was very simple family venture. My father was have just a retail shop. And KB Suri, who started, who was a founder, was two years older to me, so he had a certain cardiac arrest back in the year 2000. I think around the same time around Diwali in the year 2000. So I took over after that. So uh, could you recount some of those pivotal moments that have contributed to the success of this uh, company? Anisha, I would say it's almost 40 years now. We are entering 40th year in the 1st of December. So of course we had countless moments, but if I go back and try to see, okay, what are the pivotal moments or what are the so-called turnaround moments? So back in uh, 92, uh, we started, I would say from when we started in 84, it was one single product, mm -hmm. Emisly. And by the way, the name of the company, Morpin, it comes from our first product. It was great uh, scientist, Dr. Morpin, back in the French, in France. He invented uh, penicillin. Yeah. And the name comes from the penicillin. Okay. So that was a semi-synthetic penicillin. Now Dr. Morpin is sitting in heavens. <laughs> and now it's serving India now. <laughs> so that's the beauty. 
And after that one product, we started adding MPS lane, Amoxis lane, Cloxus lane, one, two, three, four. But of course, there were issues of raw material and things. But we could see from 84 to 1992 that we are getting stuck in the antibiotics business, mm -hmm. which was a sort of, I would say, no margin business. It's still there. And when this COVID thing was happening and China story and mm. import from China, that's all antibiotics. We still live in antibiotics. That's how we are a poor country. So mm. that's how it was being assumed. But we could see that so long as we keep doing this routine business, we'll never get out of this. And we need to go to the new molecules. We mm -hmm. need to have R&D. We need to have innovation. That's how it all started back in 92. And of course, we are not having any money. We are a small scale company. We were again under the entangle of banks. At that time, the pivotal moment was IPO. So 92, we had an IPO, November 92, I remember that. And uh, fortunately today, when we re recall and recollect, these, these IPO days are back now with 400 times mm. the subscription. So we had the IPO was subscribed 40 times. And uh, the proud moment was our IPO came 16th November 92. And it was the same day when Reliance also had an IPO. The Reliance issue was at par. We were at premium and we used to go and try. Oh my God, Reliance is at par. We are at premium and that's an exciting moment. And of course, the issue was subscribed 40 times. So I would say that was one move that we came out of that so-called family business, private limited, depending on banks. Mm. So of course the share price went from 25 rupees to 200, 500 up to 1200 rupees. We had seen all those lovely days and we were the market darling and we were among the top five uh, I would say equity returns in those years. So we got technology from uh, Spain for manufacture of two products, Loratadine and Cisapride. Of course we started a couple of more products. One of the products, Loratadine, survived, means survived the market and everything. And today, that Loratadine, which you started in 92, it is still giving us 300 crore rupees of business in 25 years after. And there's no competition because it was a big milestone we were able to do that. So we are fortunate that uh, our core strength is that we have been able to get FDA approvals. Second is after FDA approval, we had approvals from European Authority, EU GMP, then Japan, Korea, Taiwan, all countries approvals we have been getting. I think that's with a, another milestone which we have achieved. As Morapen, why don't we go directly to the consumer? So that was a big move we did and we launched a brand called Dr. Morapen. And today we are proud that okay, Dr. Morapen standalone is around six, seven hundred crores business brand. I want to then ask you, how do you set yourself apart from other pharmaceutical companies? Because like you mentioned, we've seen so many of them running to the crosshairs of the US FDA. Yeah. What have you done to avoid this? And what sets you apart? So I would say leadership is one strategy when it comes to API. Second is the differentiation in terms of the new molecules. What molecules do we want? And of course, everybody has got same data. Everybody is doing the same thing. Yeah. Now, our core competency is we believe in quality. We believe in customer satisfaction. They're okay. We don't want to go wrong anywhere on the wrong step on the wrong side of FDA also. So that's a continuity we are giving. Maintaining a, such a financial environment where all the business team can work effectively without having any impact from, from the outside world. To me, being the interface between company and the rest of the world, so my job involves speaking to financial uh, people like banks, field funds, and even uh, the investors as well, which basically gives a glimpse to the rest of the people and it will help the company to bring in capital. As Morpen is a listed entity, my role as a CFO involves reporting the financial numbers on a quarterly basis. Uh, at Morpen, our strategic approach to developing any new products or delivering any value to our customers is deep-rooted in understanding our customers, uh, their needs. Uh, and what we do is that we develop new polymers in a very cost-effective manner. Now this helps us in gathering a larger market share. We try and capture 25 to 30% of market share globally for our products. Uh, we are very reliant on uh, technology and uh, we're using AI in uh, developing our new products at R&D. We're using machine learning to uh, make synergies with our purchase and sales prices. We prioritize our product development in line with our brand positioning and try to um, maintain uh, the highest level of environment-friendly, uh, sustainable practices uh, towards our product development. 
Right. So India is the pharmacy of the world already, you know, not just the antibiotics and, uh, you know, the generic drugs, even vaccines everywhere you Everything. see, you know, so we're the pharmacy of the world. Yeah. So do you think pharmaceuticals has actually nailed it when it comes to make in India or is there still more to do uh, when it comes to make in India and what are your plans? Do you think you can be the flag bearer of make in that, India for uh, pharmaceuticals? Uh, it's too, too it may be too loud to claim that okay we are make in India so we are the country as a whole we are working on that and it's a big vision which our honorable prime minister has given even though we are working for that but giving it a name that okay this is required mm. if there's an option of make in India do it for example 2014 the new government came mm. and 2016 they started make in India story and by same year we started by chance medical devices business mm. it wasn't that now Mr. Modi has said that we should do it but we were working on it but you feel like a part of the story. Yeah. So medical devices is one which is 100% import substitution. Yeah. And slowly, slowly we have reduced the import. We are trying to go backward, backward, backward. So it's not only, I would say, one step backward and two step forward. We're going as back as we can do that. So that's, I think, one, one big advantage we have done. Now, as India, what we see is even in the new molecule, we now have a big opportunity opening up not only because we want make in India. Now, the whole world wants us to make in India. Now, within India, as Morapen, we have two strong things. One is an API player. We are a strong API player, core regulatory skills with FDA filings, as I told you, that FDA approvals, NIL 483s. Then in medical devices, we've got uh, ISO, ISO mm. 13485. We're the only one in the country mm. with ISO 13485 approval from the UK. And then uh, we, we have got uh, this uh, DMF filings, US DMF and non-US DMFs, CPs for the Europe and then for China and for Korea, Taiwan. So we got filings there also. We have 200 filings for non-US and another 26 filings for the US market. That's great. We'll slip into a break at this point in time, but we will come back and continue this discussion. Keep watching Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. For more than 35 years, Morpen has stood as a radiant emblem of excellence and innovation within the healthcare sector. Nestled amidst the scenic beauty of Badi, their cutting-edge manufacturing facility comprises 10 integrated plants, each meticulously dedicated to crafting exceptional products. Morpen has solidified its position as a market leader, particularly in the field of medical devices, notably glucometers. Their product portfolio impressively extends from prescription-based medications to cutting-edge over-the-counter formulations and essential nutraceuticals. The company's foray into the domain of medical devices and diagnostics represents a strategic diversification, emblematic of their comprehensive approach to healthcare solutions. At the epicenter of the extraordinary success narrative resides an agile and untiring research and development team ceaselessly pushing the boundaries of excellence within the generics market. This steadfast dedication equips them to not only navigate the ever-evolving demands of the industry, but also to etch an indelible mark on the lives of countless individuals scattered across the world. Now, you've spoken about some of the drugs uh, that you have market leadership in. Yeah. So, your product portfolio is very expansive. First, you have, you have a B2B, plus you have a direct customer. So is this a thought out strategy? Does it become tough to you know, manage so many balls in the air or is it part of your core strategy? Does it uh, drive your revenue? It's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's a bit complicated. Many companies or rather many, I would say business consultants today will say, oh, focus, focus, mm -hmm. focus. Mm -hmm. But in healthcare particularly, I would say this focus word doesn't work. Because this human being machine, I mean, this five, six feet, tall machine, mm -hmm. this has got the maximum research done on it. So there are more than 50,000 products which are used every day to keep this human being alive. And that's what life is. I mean, the, the whole story is to keep the human being alive. 
so from medicines to beauty to technology to 100 things so we can't say okay i have made three products and that's it so i have to keep innovating keep giving new products now if i make apis alone the bulk drugs then how do i go to the formulation if you go to a doctor every doctor has got different product list for the same thing maybe different salts maybe different names mm. then okay pharma is covered doctor is covered with the consumer now the time is changing they in india are till date we are sitting in 2023 of quarter of a century of is over we still do not have guideline for otc but we are seeing the future the future is mm. customer is going to make decisions mm. so that's how even in dr morpen we started the online division during covid time mm. everybody was sitting home buying medicines online we started online thing so these are i would say the new changes what we have been adopting mm. none of the other company in country has otc division selling online mm. selling vitamins and selling medical devices or selling nutraceuticals mm. everybody tries to make money on the doctor's channel that's that's what mm. i think is the difference and with our uh, popular brands like barnol so we get a immediate recall uh, api is our uh, main business and it is well established for many years in api we are very strong in all aspects be the market side or the plant side on the technical front r&d but our core strength is the global uh, leadership about our products like when you say market leadership uh, rotadine is our one of the largest product where we are market leaders and we are the largest producer of this drug in the world and we have about 90% market share in us Similarly, Monte Lucast is our uh, main product. Second product, which is again, we are the world's largest manufacturer, and we are a major player in the market. Uh, similarly, we have two more products, uh, namely uh, Fexofenadine and Atorvastatin, where have we have we have the significant market share. And uh, <clears throat> second part is uh, the, about the quality. Morpen is known for it. quality products we have never had any complaint or any recall in the market in last 25 years that is our track record with respect to the quality and that speaks about our credibility in the market and we have uh, more than 800 satisfied customers across the world we are exporting to almost 80 countries our api products for many years and we have approvals from us fda from european authorities from japan from korea from brazil so all these countries we are registered and we are approved supplier and uh, we are selling our product with confidence and uh, credibility so our endeavors to diversify into medical devices are aligned with the company's overall objectives of touching each and every uh, part of a consumer's healthcare journey so a healthcare journey for a consumer typically starts with you know the diagnosis or with the with the identification of a particular ailment in the case of chronic ailments such as hypertension and diabetes it's not just the identification of the uh, problem but also the routine management of the uh, disease the routine management of the disease requires a constant monitoring so constant monitoring is where we come in our objective is to provide users provide patients with an easy to use and a reliable product which guides them which takes them through the journey quality assurance it is the backbone of our operational framework we have rigorous quality endorsement systems at every step of our production process starting from the selection and approval of raw materials till the final packaging there is a written sop for everything detailed testing is done at every stage to achieve consistent standards of excellence elevated quality standards are crucial for safeguarding our consumers welfare and the reputation of our brand our state of art facilities in masool khana and baddi have earned recognition from various regulatory authorities like us fda edqm kfda pmda among others such certifications and endorsement validate the resilience and efficacy of our quality systems at morpen quality is not just practiced it also shapes our philosophy which steers every dimensions of our operations sustainability is not just a buzzword it's a reality for us We believe in giving back to the society and our communities. Our adoption of zero liquid discharge policy 
has had a positive impact on the discharges and local ecosystems. Digitization has made us virtually paperless, making us and our economical and environmental footprint better. An engaged workforce is a set for any organization, and here at Moripin, possess it with great pride. People here take the onus of their own workspace, and that's the best part of this culture. Participative leadership. This is the word which defines the manufacturing leadership team at Maripan. Here we have a very structured uh, approach towards capability building, which makes Maripan ready for the future success and sustainability. We believe in launching some unique products which will be there for the first time in India. To augment our technology and to talk about our uniqueness of the products, there are two products currently in our kitty. One of them is Cremega, which offers krill oil, 1000 mg, along with coenzyme Q10. That's a very unique product because we're exporting it from Aqua Biomarine, a Norway-based company, which is the world's largest producer of krill oil and getting the purest form of krill from the Antarctic Ocean, which ensures the highest amount of omega-3 fatty acid index level increase. Nowadays, if you see in India, maximum patients are having cardiac arrest because of low levels of omega-3 fatty acids. And this is one drug which ensures that there is a sustainable and therapeutic level incremental gain in omega-3 fatty acid index just after administration of two to three months. So Primega is a very unique product with krill oil, which again there for the first time in India we have. Look, vision I would say would be a certainly derived from where we are coming from. So in the short term, I would say three to five years, I would say rather three years is uh, the vision is very simple. And like I told that we had a master class with Dr. Ram Saran. So the vision is 2x for the midterm. 2x means 2x in revenues. Mm. And when you say two, 2x in revenues, we are around 1500 crores now. So we 3000 mm. crore revenue in the coming three years, which will give us a market capitalization, continuing the same market industry parameter of a billion dollars. So the midterm vision is a billion dollar company in three years time, which will be 2x of the revenues and of course keeping the industry multiple same. And if we talk of a longer term, the longer term will be a billion dollar revenues over a period of 10 years. So if you have billion dollar revenues, say around say 10,000 crore by the time. So company would certainly be in a different league, mm -hmm. keeping the same parameters. So it can be 50,000 crore, 60,000 crore company for the next, in the next 10 years. That's what the that's where we need to go and we, if we keep growing at the same pace and obviously the question is what are we going to do that I would say we have to do whatever is required to be done to reach there yes, so yes wishing you all the very best uh, for uh, achieving that vision that you have thank you. thank you so much for speaking with us pleasure thank you with an ambitious vision, Marpin has embarked on an inspiring journey armed with a massive pipeline of API formulations with the aim of capturing a significant share of the $40 billion market by 2025. Their commitment to innovation is exemplified by their robust intellectual property portfolio in the API segment, boasting an impressive 143 patents, 26 approved US drug master files, 8 China import drug licenses, 185 non-US DMFs and the introduction of 41 new products. Marple Laboratories is actively preparing for a substantial increase in its API production capacity, aiming to achieve an impressive 1000 KL capacity within the next three years. This strategic expansion not only reaffirms Marpin's dedication to addressing the burgeoning demands of the healthcare sector, but also solidifies their role as a pivotal player in meeting the ever-evolving healthcare requirements of a worldwide audience, all the while upholding the legacy of unparalleled quality and innovation. So this was the amazing journey of Morphin Laboratories. We'll soon be back with another fascinating story on GMO Media Presents Incredible Journeys, Brands and Leaders. Thanks for watching.